Well, church, how we doing? How we doing? You guys good? <laughs> People in the back over here, you guys good? You in? Man, it's good to be here. It's like, I mean, like here, it's good to be here because the alternative being here is to be stuck on Route 1 <laughs> or stuck at the Five Points Light at Lewis. Come on now. Or stuck at Walmart with crazy people of Walmart. Come on. Listen, I just got to tell you, I feel so much more godly in this basement than I do at any of those places. Come on, raise your hand if you're with me. If you're a road rager and you're with me. Oh, I knew you would raise your hand, Carrie. Um, <laughs> uh, hey, speaking of uh, godly, I always tell you that my wife is the most godly person in my family. And I'm the pastor, so that's kind of rough. But... Um, but my wife celebrated her birthday yesterday. And so can you show some love to my better half right here? Happy birthday, baby. We, uh, we got married 15 years ago this year. And this is, this is not a lie. Stacy looks younger now than she did 15 years ago. I don't know how it's possible. She, there's not a wrinkle, not a gray hair, not a cane or nothing. I look like Doc Brown because you all stress me out. But... Um, I love you, babe. Happy birthday. Uh, I want to show a lot of love to everybody who's new in the room. Thanks for being with us. Everybody who's joining us online. Can you guys just like one more time, just show some love to all these people. Thanks for joining us out here. Well, um, hey, perfect Sunday if you're new, because today we're kicking off this new series uh, I'm calling Triple Threat. And for three Sundays, we're going to talk about three different topics. Today, we're going to talk about honor, honor. Uh, next weekend, we're going to talk about integrity. Then we're going to hit time out. And on dad's day, we're just going to like blow out and just throw out axes. Yeah. I'm so pumped about that. Um, and then we'll wrap this series up by talking about perseverance. And my, my tagline for this series that I made up, and we'll put this on the screen, is the three ingredients you need to threaten the average right out of your life. Boom. Ingredients. It's like going to be a cooking show in here today. All right. So just... Brace yourselves, all right? So the three ingredients you need to threaten the average right out of your life. I'm pretty proud of this subtitle. You all don't seem too psyched about it. But tell three people, tell three people you're way above average. Just go ahead and tell three people you're way above average. Even if you don't believe it, tell them. All right, all right. So uh, speaking of Doc Brown, I, I think we should all jump back into a DeLorean. And I want to take you all back to the year 2002. Now, I'm curious, who in the room, you weren't even around yet in 2002. Who was not even around yet? Right there, a whole section back here. Listen, that's not fair. You all enjoy your life. I'll enjoy my Metamucil. All right, so that's great. In 2002, I was... Uh, over at, at Dell Tech taking University of Delaware classes. And um, I spent most of my time in my freshman year not in the college library, not, not studying for biology 101. I spent most of my time at the Georgetown Taco Bell. <laughs> Come on, somebody. I love, I, listen, I, I ended up in my first semester of college, my freshman year, this is true, I dropped out of biology because I was way more into food science than I was actual science. I was always at the Taco Bell, and uh, I love going to the Taco Bell. Who loves some Taco Bell? You love it? Love it? Listen, I went there so much, and I'll, I'll be honest. To this day, I'm not quite sure that the ground beef at Taco Bell is actually ground beef. <laughs> I can't prove it, but I, might, I think it might be Fancy Feast cat food. <laughs> it might be, and some of you are like never like eat it again. But listen, I think it's still delicious, and so I was... I was always at the Taco Bell. It's, it's a wonder I'm even still alive, you know. Um, and I, I went there so much that I joined an exclusive club in my freshman year of college. The Freshman 15 Club. Come on, somebody. Did you, anybody, anybody join that club? My, my regular jeans turn into skinny jeans real fast, all right? And so one day before class in my, in my freshman year of college, I decided I, bet, I better go running so my heart keeps running. And so I decided to run to the stop sign at the end of my road. And have you ever like started something and like midway through you thought, I'm going to die? Yes. Like, I don't think I'm going to make it through this. 
That's how it was. Like my first, first runs are the worst. All right. So I'm like running and, and I learned real quick that you can eat all the Taco Bell you want, but that doesn't mean you can run to the border. You got to call an Uber to get to the border if you eat too much Taco Bell. And so I was like dry heaving on my run. I was calling both stinking Dukes like help. Like I just was struggling with this run. And so that was my first run 20 years ago. Now, uh, for the last 20 years, I have become a runner from that moment. Like this, this, um, this week, I'll run 20 miles. I just run. All right. And so I know like all the fitness people are like, oh, that's great. You run for your health. No, I don't. I run to eat, people. This is not about fitness. This is about fitting the nacho fries in so I can still fit in my pants, all right? So, like, I, that's why I run. And, and when I run, I see crazy things. I don't know. Any, any runners in the room? We got any runners in the place? Jeez. <laughs> Only if you're getting chased. Wow, there's three runners in the place. The rest of y'all need to take care of the temple, man. My goodness. <laughs> anyway, well, you all don't know this because you don't run, apparently. Um, but when you run, you see crazy things, all right? Like, like for instance, this year, I, I've almost got hit, hit by a car. That happened one time. Um, another time, um, I was running. I turned around a corner, and I almost ran into a Rottweiler. It wasn't chasing me. I just almost, I went around the corner. It was right there. And, and I always take a picture after I either almost step on a snake or run into a dog. And so here's a picture right after I almost ran into a Rottweiler. <laughs> that is like, here I come, Jesus. That's my face right there. Uh, one of the craziest things I've seen, and we'll keep this picture up on the uh, screen. You see this wood line right here? All right, that, that wood line behind me, that actually butts up uh, right to the neighborhood that I live in. Now, somebody recently bought all of that, and they're, they're taking down all those trees to, like, to build. And everybody in my neighborhood is like, oh, oh you can't do that. Just like you all did. You're like, oh. You fed right into this. Like, you can't, you can't cut down the trees, okay? And, and like, I'm thinking, you know what used to be right where your house was? <laughs> trees. It used to look actually identical to that right there. Um, and so no lie, I was running. We'll keep this picture on the screen. I was running. I was running right by that place just a couple of weeks ago. And I run around the corner. And um, the, the three guys who are cutting the trees down, they accidentally cut a tree down that fell the wrong way. And it fell into our neighborhood. <sighs> and people in our neighborhood were like, oh. <sighs> And I go, I'm running. And listen, this is not true. This lady from our neighborhood, she comes out. We'll call her Karen. <laughs> and she's so offended that there are some limbs on our road that she's shaking her head. And she's standing 20 feet away from these guys, these guys who actually cut it down. They are, at this point, they're frantically clearing everything off, okay? They're like sweating. They're working harder than I've ever worked in my life. And she's 20 feet away from them with her camera out. It's camera Karen, guys. And she's filming them to send to our HOA. Right? Like she's, she's filming them because she can't wait to put it on Facebook for all the other Karens. But she's like, <laughs> now I'm curious... How many of you, you know somebody like that, and you know a camera Karen? Some of you are camera Karen, all right? <laughs> and listen, um, my point is, like, we live in a culture where everyone is so offended all the time, right? In 2022, we live in the golden age of being offended. It's the golden age, people. We are, there's so many opinions. We all got opinions, and we're quick to judge. We're quick to criticize. And if somebody makes a mistake, we don't forgive them. We cancel them. Right? Am I preaching? We're preaching. We're preaching. And we don't just cancel celebrities and uh, politicians and Will Smith, which I'm a little bummed. Now we're not going to get to see Men in Black 5, all right? Like, I was waiting for five. Um, no, but now we cancel our kids' first grade school teacher because they said little Johnny has a behavior problem. Well, why don't you mind your own business, <laughs> Miss Canceled? 
We, we, we like cancel our, our family, the people who we love because Uncle Frank said something 17 years ago and I didn't like it. So you're now Uncle Cancel. And I like your Thanksgiving turkey anyway, so bleh. We cancel our friends because they made a political post on social media and they're wrong, clearly. <laughs> and listen, in 2022, it is so easy to get offended. And, and it, one mistake, one post, one tree that falls the wrong way. One unpopular opinion. Um, can I give you an unpopular opinion? Yeah. Okay. I'll raise up tight. It's not that kind of, uh, you know, I'm smart enough to not put that one out there. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, so your pastor has never seen the original Top Gun. <laughs> up until last weekend, listen, I had never seen the original Top Gun. So on Memorial Day, I thought, what would be more patriotic? Then to watch Tom Cruise fly in Top Gun, okay? And so I watched the original Top Gun. Here's my opinion. It is quite literally the worst movie I have ever seen in my life. I'm not exaggerating. Listen, I would rather watch Dell Dot Traffic Cameras than have to sit through Top Gun again. Who wants to cancel me right now? Go ahead. Just raise your hands. Raise your hand. Don't lie in church. Look, all these people. Bo Dukes, he's out. He's, He's leaving the team. But listen, I told you, it doesn't take much to get offended. And and we can't, we constantly like cancel and it doesn't take much to cancel people in our culture. And uh, the problem with constantly being offended is we end up canceling and dishonoring the very people that Jesus called us to love. We end up dishonoring the very people that Jesus called us to love. So I'm calling this message, message, we'll put this on the screen, honor in a cancel culture. Now, This is not easy. Did you know how I know? Because if anybody would be almost impossible, or let's say impossible to cancel, it would be probably Jesus. After all, he's perfect. And so if anybody would be easy to honor, it would have to be Jesus. Am I right? Is is this true? Okay, so let's look at Mark chapter 6, starting in verse 1. I'll put this on the screen for you. It says this, Jesus left that part of the country and he returned with his disciples to Nazareth, his hometown. And so Jesus rolls up in his hometown. These are his people. He played t-ball with all these people. These are his people. And so the next Sabbath, he, Jesus, began teaching in a synagogue. And many who heard him were amazed. They asked, where did he get all this wisdom? I mean, I knew him when he played t-ball, but all of a sudden he's like blasting all this wisdom. He's got all this power to perform miracles. And so In one minute, they love Jesus, right? But then they scoffed. (laughs) He's just a carpenter. So they're like, okay, he's just, that's that's his occupation, he's a carpenter. He just puts together Ikea furniture. (laughs) Which, can we just cancel the person who makes the directions for Ikea furniture? Can we just (laughs) agree to all do that? Like there's pictures, give me some words. I just don't, I don't need just pictures. Anyway. He's just a carpenter. He's the son of Mary over here and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon and his sisters. They live right there on Main Street. And so they were deeply offended and got their cameras out. And they refused to believe in him. And then Jesus told them a prophet is honored everywhere except in his hometown and among his relatives and his own family. And so even perfect Jesus got canceled by camera. Camera... Karen. Now, uh, do you know that the Greek word for dishonor, because they dishonor Jesus, the Greek word for dishonor is, uh, we'll put it on the screen, atimos. Everybody say atimos. <laughs> See, I knew you were above average. All right, that's all the Greek I know, okay? Um, but atimos means to dishonor, to treat as common or ordinary, which is exactly what they did to Jesus. Now, you might say, well, <laughs> I would never do that because I'm perfect. I memorized 17 chapters of Leviticus this morning, and I can't even say it. And I I glow in the dark, okay? So, like, maybe you're like, I I would never dishonor or treat someone as common or ordinary. And if that's you, we're glad you're here, Jesus. But for the rest of us, we treat people who are extraordinary as ordinary all the time. Like, you, you need an example. You guys want an example? 
All right, we got, we got two imaginary people, Jack and Jill. And Jack and Jill are not an ice cream brand. Jack and Jill did not go up a hill. Jack and Jill are imaginary people that I just made up. But Jack and Jill, they go to college together. And they attend Biology 101 together. And Jack sees Jill, and he's like, oh, baby, you so fine. You so fine. You blow my mind. Hey, Jilly. Hey, Jilly. And, and for Jack, the butterflies are flying because he, li- he sees Jill, and he likes her hair. And he likes the way she pays attention in Biology 101, unlike him. And so after class, Jack asks Jill out on a date, not to Taco Bell, but to Agave. Everybody say, ooh. (laughs) For their first date, Jack picks up Jill, and Jack opens up Jill's door for her. Oh. And then Jack honors Jill by paying for the $19 spoonful of guac at Agave that she doesn't eat. (laughs) Jack also honors Jill because he compliments her. And he is so proud of their first date that he posts about it on TikTok. And he uses a hashtag, true love. <laughs> Two years of dating, Jack and Jill get married. They get a house, a golden doodle, and they get a 75-inch TV, praise the Lord. <laughs> are, you, are you following Jack and Jill's story? But eventually... Jack stops opening the door for Jill. Jack stops complimenting Jill. Jack doesn't really take Jill out on dates unless it's to Taco Bell, praise the Lord, for those nacho fries. And so Jack just starts to look at Jill as she's kind of like ordinary, like she's she's my girl. And so when Jack comes home from work after a long day of like going up and down the hill... Jack doesn't compliment Jill. Jack goes to the golden doodle, and he shows the golden doodle with all the affection. And then he says, hey, what's for dinner? And then they sit down, and he eats, and after he eats, he burps, and he scratches himself. This This is an imaginary story, guys. He scratches himself. He scratches himself, and he says, you want some of this? And he doesn't get why she throws up on him. This is, yeah, Butch just said it. He's like, that's not imaginary. That is reality. Isn't that kind of reality? What happened? Over time, the relationship went from extraordinary to ordinary, which is so easy. And it happens to all of us. And we look past the extraordinary person right in front of us. And we just see somebody as ordinary. And that's when dishonor sneaks in. And so I just want to give you three categories of who we should honor. Now, this is an exhaustive list because some of you are going to be like, well, this person isn't honest, so I'll have to do it. Okay, but this is just a little, little teaser, appetizer. All right, so number one is, since we're already talking about relationships, give honor in your relationships. Now, pastor confession, I can do way better at treating my extraordinary smoking hot babe of a wife as more extraordinary than she is. She is amazing, all right? And all the ladies who are married, just like elbow your husband and says, you can do better too, buddy. <laughs> Some of you won't do it. Listen, when Stacy and I first started dating for 10 years, I always opened the car door for her. For 10 years. But then, eight years ago, something happened. Anybody know what happened? kids. And all of a sudden, I became the baby carrier carrier. And I wouldn't get to go to Stacy's door. I would go to our minivan back door and I'd open it and it automatically opens it and open it. And then I would put the baby carrier in the seat and it wouldn't latch ever. So I would wiggle it. I would not shake it. Do not write an email to me, camera Karens. I would wiggle it. And that wouldn't work. So I put my knee on the side of it and try to get it in. And then I would Google, why won't this dang thing fit in here? And all the while I was doing all those things, I was not opening whose door? Stacy's door. And we stopped going out on dates as much because we had kids. Hello. But a month ago, we got to go on a date again. 
Glory to God. And we didn't go to Taco Bell, praise the Lord. We went to a place near our house, and it was way too expensive, but my wife is worth every single penny. <laughs> and then when we were leaving, I had this crazy idea. I thought, I'm not carrying a baby carrier. I'm going to open her door for her. And so I opened Stacey's door for her, and she stood there, and she said, what? <laughs> Do you want me to drive? But I never want to treat my extraordinary wife as ordinary. And so, men, fellas, guys in the room, come on, give me a grunt if you're here and you're a little nervous right now. Come on, give me a Okay. Listen, men, let's, let's open the doors for our ladies like it's 1955. Let's pay for more, too expensive meals for them that are just farm-to-table weirdo food. Just pay for it. And, and say thank you when they clean or they cook or when they wash your streaky, whitey, tidy underwear. And all the ladies said, give that pastor a raise. Come on, just say it. And uh, listen, I almost turned 40, or I turned 40 this year. I'm almost 40, which means the filter is coming off. So prepare yourself, Bayshore. Um, but all the single ladies, all the single ladies, put your hand up. Okay, no, no, I don't want any single ladies to put your hand up. But if you're a single lady in the room and you're dating a guy right now and he's not honoring you now while you're dating, make him listen to this message. And if he continues to not honor you, tell him your pastor said, we're breaking up because you is a loser <laughs> in Jesus' name. And it's not me, it's you. Nah, 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 nah. Okay? <laughs> Can everybody say amen? amen? See, the filter's coming off, all right? But listen, husbands, wives, boyfriends, girlfriends, just, just people in general, if you want to have extraordinary relationships, honor each other. Honor each other. And then you might say, well, I, you know, if, if my husband... Or if my wife or if my na 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 acted honorable, then I would show them honor. Because we tend to think that we will give honor once somebody earns honor. But listen, respect is earned. Honor is given. Respect is earned. Honor is given. And what if, if you treated them honorable, what if they started to act honorable? Sometimes when you treat somebody like they're extraordinary and like they're special, sometimes they will start to act honorable. And if you believe the worst about somebody and you tear somebody down all day long and you tell them they smell like beef and cheese every single day, <laughs> they tend to act more dishonorable. And so husbands, wives, boyfriends, girlfriends, just people in general, if you want extraordinary relationships in your life, honor each other. And so we honor uh, any relationships. Here's the next one. We give honor to God. This is really the most important one. Now, um, when I was uh, in high school, I had two best friends. One was uh, Bo Dukes, who played uh, the drums over here today. Bo St Stinkin' Dukes, that is. And my other best friend was Andy Stinkin' Mason. I don't know if Andy Stinkin' Mason is in the room right now. And normally... He's in the foyer. Okay, hey, Andy, in the foyer. Um, normally, Andy's sitting in the back holding the most, you know, ki the kid who name he names after some biblical character. Like, Andy has the most biblically character named kids ever. <laughs> if you're ever serving, like, Bayshore Kids, you're like, oh, wow, we have Moses and Solomon in class today. I wonder who's, whose parents uh, have these kids. Andy, that's Andy's kids. <laughs> and... Uh, Andy, l listen, Andy, I think we took a picture this morning. Yeah, this is me, Andy, and uh, Bo right there. I love these guys. We know so much about each other, we could all blackmail each other. <laughs> I, actually, I don't know if that's totally true, Bo. Like, I, I know Bo and I, Bo leads worship, I'm the pastor. Andy is the most godly of all of our friends. Amen. Amen. See, listen. <laughs> yeah, that's his wife, Logan, right there. It's true. Listen, I don't know why Andy is not running this church. I mean, he is the godly one out of our friend group. When we were kids growing up uh, in high school, in between third and fourth period, we got break, which was 15 minutes of, of like kind of no time to do whatever you wanted. And, and Bo and I would always go to the vending machines and get a Pepsi and a honey bun. Uh, you can't do that nowadays. You get like a kombucha and some quinoa. 
but this was Top Gun era, all right? So anyway, we get a, a Pepsi and a, a honey bun. But Andy, during break, would go to the school chapel and pray. That's godly Andy. When we would go to each other's houses on Friday nights, um, Bo and I would watch like Chris Farley movies, and Andy would slip away to read his Bible. When we would, Bo and I would like prank call people, Andy would be in the background like apologizing, like, hey, hey, they, my friends, they know not what they do. <laughs> it's 100% true. Like, we don't hold a candle to godly Andy at all. <laughs> But what I appreciate about you, Andy, I know you're in the lobby, but like you show me how you honor God with every area of your life. Like you just taught me what that that looks like. And why did Andy do those things? He did those things because he knew there was nothing more extraordinary on this earth than our great God. And listen, he's not the guy in the sky. He's not the big man upstairs. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is the prince of peace. He is the beginning and the end. He is the very definition of perfect love. He is truth. He is grace. He is, he's the reason you're breathing right now. And if he didn't like you, he would hit you with lightning. You'd be a little greasy spot in your seat. But you all are here. Now you're a little greasy on top, some of you. I am. But that means that he, listen, he's not our homeboy. He is the true and one holy God. And so how do we honor him? We honor him when we're kind to each other. We honor him when we, um, when we sing songs to him in church. We honor him with our lives. We honor him with our bodies, which means there's some things that we won't do. There's some things that we won't look at. There's some things that we won't say. There's some things that we won't post on Facebook. <laughs> because we are giving honor to God. Here's the third category is we give honor to our parents. Now, where are the... I already got you earlier, kids. I already got to raise your hand earlier. But like, where are the kids at in the room? If you're under 18 or if you live with your parents, raise your hand. Even if you're 38, raise your hand. No, I'm just kidding. All right, we got some kids in the room. All right, um, I'm, I'm going to talk to you all for a second. Now, kids, I promise you, your parents didn't pay me to say what I'm about to say. But parents, you can pay me after the service. I accept Visa, MasterCard, Bitcoin, whatever. No, but kids, did you know that one of God's top 10 commandments is for you to honor God? Or, and I'm sorry, to honor your parents. That's what I meant to say. Uh, yeah, God's in there. He's number one. All right. So, but honor your parents. That is in the top 10 to honor your parents, which means it's a big deal. Now, you might say, well, I, w- I would honor my parents, but they're weird, Pastor Joel. And of course they're weird. They're your parents. All parents are weird. Isn't this true? Listen, mom, I love you, but I just feel like the world needs to hear a story about how weird you were when we were growing up. <laughs> so when, when we were growing up, me and my brother, um, for, two, for one week, my mom told us for an entire week that she had a big surprise for us. For an entire week. She was like, I got this big surprise for you kids. They're like, it's coming on Thursday. Next Thursday, you be ready for this surprise. The surprise is coming. Are you excited, kids? And we're like, yes, we're excited. And our minds went wild. We're like, okay, well, are we going to get a new dog? Oh, no, no, we're going to go to Circuit City and get a Nintendo Entertainment System. Oh, no, no, we're, we're going to Disney. It's got to it's be Disney. And so that Thursday came, and we got off the bus, and my mom was sitting in the driveway in her 1987 Brown Buick Century. And I was like, oh, that's definitely the ticket to Disney. <laughs> so we got in the car, and my mom was like, it's Thursday. Are you kids excited for your big surprise? And we're like, yes, Mom, we are. And we drove. We started driving. And 20 minutes into our drive, we took a little stop. It was weird. It was like a pit stop, I guess, on the way to Disney. We stopped at this place, and... In Seaford, it was a brick building, and I thought, well, this is a bank. This is to get money for our Disney trip. This is the bank. <laughs> I was like, Mom, you going into the bank? And my, my mom said, no, 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 son, that's the health clinic. You're getting your flu vaccination. Surprise. <laughs> if I am lying, I am dying. My brother is right here. He can verify this after the service. I am still bitter, Mom. I don't get it. How many of your parents did some weird stuff? Raise your hand, everybody. If your parents did some weird stuff. See, they're weird. Now, listen, Mom, I know that you just, that was a terrible approach, honestly. <laughs> but you're, you're just trying to look out for me and do the best for me. Which, by the way, parents, do you know that our main goal with our kids is not to have them be our best friends? Our main goal is to teach them to be God-honoring kids that live above average honorable lives and and turn into dang good human beings. 
That's, that's our goal. And so that's my goal with my kids. Now, we do this weird thing in our house um, for our kids. Every time we ask them to do something, uh, and some of the parents are going to take notes, and if you're a kid sitting next to your parents, steal their pen right now, okay? So take their pen. But when we ask our kids to do something, they have to do it right away, the right way, all the way. You do it right away, the right way, all the way. And my kids hate it. They're like, ugh. But we do that because we want them to grow up to be honorable. And so when they leave my house one day, praise the Lord, (laughs) they know how to honor their future spouse. They know how to honor their future boss. They know how to honor their future friends. And so kids, I know your parents are weird and they put sinful amounts of suntan lotion on you. I know it. But they're just trying to help you be a God-honoring person so that you can be a dang good human being because if you're an honorable person you will live an above average life and that's what they want for you that's what they want for you and that's why God wants you to honor your parents and so you just 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 do me a favor and listen to them trust them respect them and please eat your vegetables okay (laughs) inflation is expensive okay those veggies are costing us way more money now So we honor our parents, we honor each other, and we honor God. And listen, that's my three. I didn't even give you any hard ones today. I didn't give you people you don't like. I didn't give you Pittsburgh Steelers fans. I didn't give you, you know, people who vote different than you. (laughs) Actually, let's scrap that one. Can we just scrap that one? You know, the Bible says love your neighbor unless they have a bumper sticker of the other candidate on their car. In that case... Key their car and let your little Yorkie poo poo in their yard, okay? <laughs> Just kidding. No, the Bible doesn't say that, right? Can we not disagree but still be honorable to each other? I think even if we disagree, that doesn't mean we have to be dishonorable. And I think we should honor everyone. Everyone. Because Jesus made everyone. He made everyone. So we should honor everyone. Now, I know. I know with a message like this, some of you are like don't like it. No, this is not your top 10. <laughs> and you might be like, and you didn't even tell us how to honor. You said honor. That's, I can't do it. See, can't do it. Well, let, let, me, let me show you a how. This is Romans 12, verse 10. First half, we'll just kind of breeze through, even though it's really good. Love one another with brotherly, brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Now, do one another. That's the how. How do you show honor? You try to out-honor the other person. Now, where are the competitive people at in the room? Competitive people, Stacey, raise your hand. <laughs> Listen, competitive people, make it a competition. Live every day like it's the out-honor Olympics, and you're going for the gold, baby. Husbands, okay, you know, just get to the dishwasher before your wife. Go medal. Tell her why you love her. Gold medal. <laughs> Open her door for her. Gold medal. And if you do all, if you get three golds, you can exchange those. <laughs> I'm just saying, all right? Anyway, that'll preach to some people that won't preach to other people. Anyway, um, or listen, for, for everybody, if you're, you're going to a restaurant, maybe you're doing well for yourself, maybe you go to Big Fish. Grab the bill and pay for it. And if somebody else there tries to take it out of your hand, you punch him in the throat because this is the out honor Olympics. (laughs) When somebody is moving in two doors down from you, all right, they're they're, they're from Pennsylvania. Yeah, they're Eagles fans. They're Eagles fans. Honor them anyway. When you leave today on your own Route 1 and somebody tries to squeeze in in front of you, this pains me to say this. <laughs> Let them in. Uh, baby steps. Don't worry. L- baby steps. Butch is it ready. <laughs> yeah. When somebody cuts down a tree and it falls accidentally into your neighborhood, put the camera down and pick up some sticks. <laughs> and so that's how we can honor people. What would happen in a cancel culture, if we tried to out on each other, we tried to out encourage each other, outdo each other, out love each other, out forgive each other, you know what would happen? Maybe, just maybe, honor culture would start to replace cancel culture. 
And since I have the microphone and y'all didn't leave when I did some Top Gun dishonoring, I just want to spend some moments just, just honoring some of the most important people in my life, if that's okay with you. Uh, we talked about parents, um, and so I want to honor my dad first. And uh, dad, you're probably listening to this while you're cutting your grass, which looks better than mine. Dad gone it. But dad, um, I won the dad lottery with you. I honor you. You taught me how to be a Jesus follower. You taught me how to be a dad. You taught me how to be a husband. You taught me how to do this. And I am not who I am without you. And even though you tried to get me to be a Green Bay Packers fan, I still honor you. (laughs) I love you, Dad. Um, I honor you, Mom. You're my biggest encourager. You're my biggest supporter. Um, uh, You unconditionally loved me and still do. You text me every single Sunday morning before I preach. And I can't even give words to how much you have shaped me in my life. And um, I also want to thank you for that time I set Carl Vince's backyard on fire. And you didn't disown me. Um, <laughs> but, Mom, I really do. I, I honor you. Uh, to my wife, I'm going to look straight. You're the best. Aside from Jesus, you are and will always be the best thing that's ever happened to me in my life. You can outforgive me. You can outwork me. You outspeed me. But you are the greatest gift God's ever given to me. And I can't do any, I'm, no, I'm nobody without, without you. So I honor you. Whew, move on. Uh, I want to honor our staff, our team here. These guys are the best of the best. The way these guys serve and the effort they put in, the energy they put in, like there is not a better church team on the planet. And I honor you guys. Bo Dukes, who's been with me since sixth grade, and um, and Cotter, and Kristen, and Nate, and Jen, there's not a more talented group of people that I know. And you guys can all go and make more money somewhere else. But you anchor yourself to the vision of this church, and you don't laugh at my crazy ideas, and you guys put up with all this craziness, and I honor you guys. I honor you guys. I honor you guys as a church. You guys are the greatest church I have ever known in my life. The way you love, the way you encourage, the way you believe in people, the way you act like Jesus, I have never seen another church like it. And you've attached yourself to our crazy mission. And our crazy mission is to to be a church for everyone. And so when my buddy Sean comes up here and speaks, and Sean five years ago couldn't get through one of my messages without going in our bathroom and getting high. But you guys didn't judge Sean. You love Sean. And he's this summer going to celebrate five years clean, which we always celebrate. And listen, when Sean stood up on the stage last weekend and he told a story which was messy, I didn't get one email from a camera Karen that said, you can't have a guy like that get on this stage. Everybody rallied behind Sean because our church celebrates life change like no church I've ever seen in my life. And so I thank you. I honor you guys. I love this church because I love how you love people. And I believe Jesus will be proud of this church. And most importantly, I honor Jesus. He is my savior. He is my redeemer. He knows my darkest moments, and he puts up with me anyway. Can anybody relate? He loves me, and he's seen it all, and I'll never get it, but he honored me by giving his life up for me on the cross. And if he would honor me in that way, maybe I should consider honoring everyone else because on that cross, he also gave up his life for everyone, which means they're valuable. I'll uh, end with this. When I was a kid, I loved baseball. Loved baseball. And my mom would take me to the Ames department store in, um, in Millsboro, and I'll buy a 50 cent pack of Topps baseball cards for the terrible, chewless, tasteless stick of gum that was in the baseball cards. Who had that gum before? 
that's what's wrong with you. <laughs> and I get that pack of baseball cards and I would think, oh, I'm going to get something that's valuable today. I'm going to get Ken Griffey Jr.'s rookie card. I was so excited and I never got it. But I did get that stick of gum and I eat it every time. But Ken Griffey Jr. was like the home run king when I was a kid. But one of the biggest home run kings of all time is this guy on the screen, which is Babe Ruth, the great Bambino, or if you like the Sandlot like me, the great Bambi. And Babe Ruth, I don't know if you know this, he signed tons of home run baseballs, but he only signed seven home run bats. His entire career, seven home run bats. Now, this is going to be crazy and surprise some of you, but I have his seventh home run signed bat right here. No, just kidding. I got this on Amazon on Thursday. (laughs) Some of you, I took you for that one, right? You're in. Like, wow. Oh, Amazon Prime, baby. Um, Canceled. Sorry. So um, here's what's interesting. For the longest time, one of the seven bats was missing. Nobody knew where it was. And this guy had it. And um, this guy in 1988, the person who had it, he was on his deathbed. He didn't really have any relatives that were still alive. And so the person who was taking care of him was Marsha. And Marsha took care of him so well that at the end of his life, this guy gave Marsha the seventh missing home run Babe Ruth bat. Now, Marsha did not watch MLB TV back in 1923. So she was like, Great. Were well, you going to also pay me money? Like, she didn't know, like, why the bat was a big deal. And so somebody say, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. <laughs> Come on, Marsha. It's the Babe Ruth bat. But she didn't know. So this is a true story. She put the bat under her bed in case a creeper comes in in the middle of the night. The seventh missing Babe Ruth bat sat under her bed for 18 years. And one day, after 18 years, she said, I want to open a restaurant, but I don't have any, any money. McFly. So she's like, I wonder if that bat's worth anything. She gets the bat. She goes down to the local card store. She takes it in. She's like, I got this bat. It says like, I don't know, Baby Ruth on it. It's like a candy bar promotional bat, I think. I don't know. And the guy's like, oh my goodness, it's the missing bat. And they took it to auction. And that bat that sat under her bed for 18 years collecting dust raised $1.3 million. Crazy story, right? And the point of the story is if you have a bat under your bed, get it and put it in the giving bucket next weekend. We, we accept baseball memorabilia, all right? Like, we're, we're open to all of it. Um, now, here's the question. Why is this bat worth $19.99? Because I'm an Amazon Prime member and get free shipping. And why was that bat worth $1.3 million? What's the the difference? That bat had Babe Ruth's name on it that he signed. And so here's my point. What, why don't we, why, why don't we just cancel people? Why don't we just like, why honor people who are hard to honor? Because Jesus' name is on them. His name is on them. He went to the cross for them. He died for them because he loves them, because he made them. And so... They are worth more than any bat that Babe Ruth ever signed. It's his name that makes us valuable. It's his name that makes you valuable. You are valuable. You're valuable. And so is every person you will ever meet. And so in a cancel culture, can we honor people? Can we out honor the people around us? Can we be the church that honors every single person? Can we be people in our relationships that try to outdo our spouse and have extraordinary relationships? Can we be kids? Can you be kids that honor your parents? Can we be a church that honors everyone because Jesus' name is on us and on everyone? Are you all with me? You all in it? Can you honor some people this week for me? Let me pray with you guys. Jesus, I'm so thankful for... The fact that even though you were honored, you taught us how to honor. And Jesus, we're just so impressed by how you always stood up against people who are trying to get you, but you always loved them anyway. And so God, I don't know who that is for somebody in this room, but God, I pray that we will honor the people, even if they're not acting honorable, we will give them honor because honor is given. 
And so, God, I pray that we'll be that church. I pray that we'll honor each other in our relationships. I pray that we will honor our parents. And most importantly, I pray that we'll honor you, God, because you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords and the Prince of peace. And there is no one greater than you. Thank you for going to the cross for us so that we are valuable. We love you in Jesus' name. And we all said amen. Amen. Amen.